Am I wrong that I broke up with him without warning? My ex-boyfriend is making my life miserable so here it goes, I was in a relationship with Chris for four years. We were best friends. Everything was perfect like a fairy tale. We both had well-paying jobs. And we had a great apartment. I mean it was his but I used to pay half the rent. I thought this was it. I definitely knew we were gonna get married. But then tragedy struck. One of my co-workers got fired from job because she filed a harassment case against our manager. I knew he was capable of doing it and she had proof so I backed her up. But then she got fired from work and I knew I was the next one to get fired. Everyone was talking about it. All of us knew I was getting fired and that eventually happened. But I was not sad. Was already searching for a new job and told my boyfriend he was very supportive. That night he went out with his friends. He asked me but I was tired. Everything was fine two days later I got a message from his friend. He said my boyfriend slept with his girlfriend. At first I thought it was a prank or joke but no he was right. He said that they didn't have an affair but they did sleep together. It was a one-time thing. He even showed me the photos. His girlfriend confessed to him as she felt guilty. He broke up with her. Asked me to do the same. I was shocked, and didn't know what to do. I thought of asking my boyfriend then I got a message from him saying I want to talk to you. He said he'll come home and if you are at home stay there I'll be there in 15 minutes this confirmed everything. I was crying and then I packed my bags and all my stuff. I left a note saying I know that you cheated and I'm breaking up with you. I did this because I didn't want to face him. If I stayed there he would have manipulated me. He always did this when he wanted something. I went to my sister house and went to sleep. I switched off my phone. Told my sister everything and said not to tell my boyfriend I'm here. He was calling. Everyone in my family and friends to ask about me. I already told my family. My boyfriend even visited my sister's house. I think he knew I was there. My sister kicked him out. I was totally numb. Didn't know how to feel what to do. I was not even crying anymore, just sitting there totally blank. My sister boyfriend told me I can stay here as long as I want. He is a great guy. Few days later I was waiting for my sister and suddenly my ex-boyfriend came there and sat next to me. Here is how the conversation goes. Chris, hi how are you me, good as you can see. See, you're looking great. Looking very beautiful M, what do you want now? You cheated and now here to tell me reason or excuses see I didn't do it on purpose it just happened. I'm sorry I will never do that again. I love you. It was my biggest mistake. I was not in control. You can slap me or punish me but don't leave me. By the way he was crying uncontrollably during this but nothing really worked for me. He was begging literally. M, okay I forgive you. Now leave. C, but what about our relationship M, what relationship? I told you I'm breaking up with you. You asked for forgiveness. I accept that. C, you can't do this. You know I messed up. I'm regretting it now. I'll die if you don't come back. M, I really don't have time for this now. You asked for forgiveness, you got it now there's nothing to talk about. I left as I was barely controlling my tears. I was just putting out a strong face just to show him. He came again the next day for the same discussion. A week later he said I left my things in his place. It was a frame filled with our pictures which I gifted him. He was doing that on purpose. I took all the pictures out and kept the frame. Every day he is here. Yesterday I told him that nothing is going to stop him. Just go and accept the truth. Today he didn't talk but he was still there. I was out shopping and he was everywhere like every single store I went to. I certainly don't care but that's weird. He just followed me. At this point. I don't want to see his face every day. I don't show it doesn't mean I don't have feelings. I cry every night. And seeing him every day makes it worse. He is ruining my life at this point. He is saying I broke up with him without any warning. So am I wrong for not waiting for his explanation? Called my mom when my husband refused to listen to me. I recently moved into my first home. I am also four months pregnant with our first baby. The pregnancy has been very hard. I have horrible morning sickness. It reached a really bad point where I passed out hit my head and my doctor admitted me to the hospital for a week. When I got home my husband allowed his brother's family to move into two of our three bedrooms. They were evicted, I don't know why. One room was my office was tossed into our room papers everywhere. The house was a complete wreck. Trash, dirty clothes, used diapers. I started to cry. It was like a light flipped my husband was no longer the same. My husband told me it wasn't that bad. My reply was fine then you should have the house cleaned up before I wake up. Completely exhausted, I fell asleep for four hours. I woke up and went to get a drink of water. I couldn't every glass we own is scattered around the house. They didn't clean a single thing. I passive aggressively started to pick up the dirty dishes and wash them. The following morning. I was trying my best to work when their kids were crying nonstop. Banging on the walls so on. Their mom was in her room for hours ignoring them. When my husband came home. He was upset with me over how I didn't make his brother's wife feel welcome in our home. By helping with their kids when she was tired. Then continued to complain how nothing was done while he was at work all day in the house. Yep the same one he didn't clean. That lead to a fight where I told him. I am too sick to have company and they need to leave. To which he replied they are his family and he won't kick them out. I started to cry again. I was beyond frustrated, exhausted, I physically couldn't do it anymore. I called my mom asking if I could come stay with her. Telling her the whole story in front of my husband. Who at this point was completely shocked, angry, also I could tell he wasn't sure what to do. My mom came with my brothers, I. Have three older brothers. My mom, super angry, told my husband. Since your family can stay so can we. 
My mom quickly took charge. I was sent to bed. My brother started cleaning complaining loudly at how disgusting my brother-in-law family is. Along with what a horrible husband my husband is for putting me through this while I'm sick. I got a text message from my mother-in-law for calling me an A for not helping my husband clean up the house and putting my bill in an uncomfortable position by having my mom boss him around. Edited to add an update, when my mother-in-law showed up she was super angry outside. I could hear shouting but couldn't understand what was said. Once inside she was shocked. My house looked really bad. My brother-in-law lied to her about what happened. My mother-in-law quickly started to help my mom in the bossing mode. My house is not just cleaned but deep cleaned. My brother-in-law and his kids are now staying with mother-in-law. She didn't know about the eviction. My in-laws helped them financially a couple of months ago. My mother-in-law was not happy about it. Sister-in-law refused to come out of the bedroom. She would scream through the door but that was about it until her family came to pick her up. Last little bit. I did talk to my husband. He seemed very remorseful. I asked for some space where he is staying at a hotel. He asked to come by and talk to me tonight. My mom and dad are here. Both moms felt like I should have someone here since I am sick. Both moms have set up a meal plan. Where they trade off who will bring in dinner. It was my mother-in-law idea. Thank you for all your advice. I truly appreciate it. Talk with husband, summed up since it lasted four hours. It was a hard talk. He is remorseful. Brother-in-law was only supposed to stay for a couple of nights. Then, originally, he thought they would be gone before I got home. He said he is tired and emotionally upset. When I originally passed out. My husband left to help a friend move. He came home and found me. He said he had no idea how long I was on the floor. He was originally scared I. Had died. Since then he has had nightmares. On top of dealing with his family drama. He admitted to dumping his frustration onto me. When it's not my fault. He begged me for another chance. The next steps. We are still separated. He plans on staying at my brother's house in his casita. We are going to go to marriage counseling and individual counseling. He asked if he could come when the home health nurse comes each night and to my doctor's appointments. I agreed to that. My husband's girl best friend is pregnant and she says it's his. So I met my husband while I was and we hit it off instantly. He was the man of my dreams he took me on date nights and made sure I was loved and gave me big gifts every so often telling me I was the only one for him. I believe this since we have been together for 4 years now and I've never had any issues until he introduced his best friend who we will call Laura for privacy reasons. I remember we had an argument because he didn't tell me about her for our whole relationship and he had been sneaking to see her and hang out with her at parties when I was sleeping, believing that he was working overtime. I was hurt by this and my first thought immediately went to infidelity but I found all of their texts to be platonic after he willingly told me to look. I thought she was nice at first since when I first met her she spoke to me politely and said how lucky I was for about a week until there was a get together and my husband invited me along because it was her mother's anniversary and her family loved my husband because they had known each other since they were kids. I was okay with this and quite excited since I wanted to make more female friends and have girls nights out to relieve my work stress since my job is difficult and I make six figures. I should also mention my husband works in an office job that doesn't pay a lot so I handle all of the house bills and chores while he is trying to get another job. I walked into the house with my husband and she ran to him happy and immediately wrapped her whole body around his arm and dragged him off to the garden. He didn't even come to get me or anything after being dragged away so I went to the kitchen to ask for a drink where I was greeted by Laura's mother. She is a lovely person, we generally had a nice talk about our own lives and she made sure I felt welcome. The whole gathering was mainly nothing special till it got to the dinner. I sat down next to my husband and Laura walked up to me and asked me to move. I asked why since the only other spot available was next to her uncle and mother and since it was about her mother wouldn't she want to sit next to her? Laura replied to the question with cause I want to sit next to him. I turned to my husband who just nodded and told me to move as well saying that I was being childish and making a scene. At this point I generally felt my blood boiling. I stood up and told my husband that I felt uncomfortable and that I needed to go to the bathroom and asked where it was. Laura told me and I left the table doing breathing exercises trying to calm down. I ended up messaging my brother from the bathroom and he said I was being jealous and that I was overreacting so I agreed and went back to the table to sit next to Laura's mother. The whole time they were laughing and it seemed that everything he said was funny to her and she kept rubbing his back touching his arms and saying how strong he had gotten and she would look at me smugly. The breaking point to all of this was when I put a bit of meat onto my plate and she said are you really going to eat all of that? And I froze in embarrassment while my husband and her laughed. Her mother stood up for me saying that was inappropriate and to treat guests with respect but she ignored it. Laura is very pretty and slim and works out so coming from her it hurts a lot. I stood up from my chair and walked out the front door and called my dad. I told him to pick me up and that I'll explain why in the car. When I got in the car I broke down and told him everything. He said I was most likely overreacting but the situation was very odd and that I'm welcome to stay with him for the time being. I thanked him and went back to our house. While I was getting comfortable my phone flooded up with messages from my husband and Laura. I read the messages and to my horror my husband was saying I ruined the whole dinner and that he was going to stay there for the night. I then read what Laura said, saying I had ruined her night because of my pick-me behavior. After doing research on that word it's only filled me up with more anger. My husband came home around 5 p.m. from Laura's and I immediately said leaving me and staying at another woman's house was disgusting and he started shouting that I'm overreacting again and that I need to go counseling for my jealousy issues. For about a month everything was going okay again apart from that my husband got more distant and cold and I could feel that our argument wedged a gap in our marriage. Until I got a message from Laura this morning with a positive pregnancy result and a threat saying we should get divorced cause it's my husband's. I don't know what to do and I'm just venting cause I feel awful and I feel like I failed as a wife. 
I don't know if I should confront my husband and I'm thinking about it. My nightmare stepmother is having a huge meltdown because we are not giving her full control over wedding planning. Last week she took things too far. So, my fiancé Jane and I are going no contact with my dad and stepmother. We haven't really spoken to either of them since my mother laid hands on my nephew, and I don't plan on being the one to reach out. Any communication between us is being handled by my younger sister. She's completely on our side, but I will remain in low contact with her for the time being. I've decided to adopt Jane's way of dealing with people she cares about, forgive what's apologized for, but never forget. Basically, if dad or stepmother ever truly understand what they did wrong and sincerely apologize, we're willing to forgive them, even if begrudgingly so. But we will never ignore what they did to our family. And for the time being, neither of them will be allowed near Luke, our baby, and any other kids we may have in the future, even if we do forgive them. I should probably mention that while my family adores my dad, most of them aren't very fond of stepmother. She had two failed marriages prior to meeting my father and was a substance addict, and my father cheated on his then-girlfriend to be with her while she was an addict. My family loved that girlfriend, and disliked stepmother right away. Not only has she been controlling and manipulative since the beginning, she's also tried to force her way into the family matriarch role by any means possible. Taking over planning duties for every family event was her favorite way to do it, because of all the attention and compliments that come with it. The main reason why I hated these parties growing up was because she'd always find a way to make everything about her, including Christmas and mine and my sister's birthdays. The rest of the family felt neutral about it, but they never liked her. With Luke, it was different. Most of my relatives didn't meet him until he was two years old. He's a bright and genuinely lovable kid, and there weren't really any other small children in the family, so everyone immediately started cooing over him. The way I see it, stepmother got upset that Jane and Luke were accepted by my family so easily compared to her experience, and that's why she resents them both. She was also mad that, aside from not being the planner, she would have absolutely no involvement in the wedding party. She tried to pressure us into letting her officiate, making my steel brother my best man or asking her sister's daughter to be our flower girl, we'd promised Jane's three-year-old niece, also her sister's daughter is 15 and doesn't know us. She also tried to convince us to let my dad walk Jane down the aisle, since her father's dead, but her eldest brother had already been enlisted. Stepmother was disappointed that my family wasn't as involved in the wedding as Jane's, and kept making comments about how that would never happen if we put her in charge. All of that being said, there is nothing that can excuse being that awful to a child, especially if it really is the petty jealousy that I suspect. Because I haven't spoken with my father, my sister has been keeping me updated on what he's been up to. As I found out through her, the story my dad and stepmother told the rest of the family completely erases Luke's injury and the abuse charges. It insinuates that me and Jane banned them because we got annoyed with stepmother and decided to take it out on my dad as well. Because most people already dislike stepmother, explaining what actually happened at night wasn't hard, and most of the relatives that I actually wanted at the wedding have apologized and are berating my dad as well. The people that didn't believe us, as well as those saying we overreacted, have been told they are not welcome in our home anymore. Those are mostly people from my dad's generation, so I can't say I'm surprised. But the realization that they are so biased they're willing to protect a woman they hate, after she hurt a child, just to make my dad happy has reassured me that I don't need any of them in my life. Stepbrother is still in denial. He refuses to believe his mother could hurt a child, even with all the evidence we have. I have to admit I understand, I love my mom too, but that doesn't mean I'd excuse his obliviousness. So he's banned too. It sucks, because we were close growing up, but I don't regret it. Besides, Jane has three other siblings besides Luke, and I'm closer to them than I ever was to him. Speaking of Jane's family, they're all furious over what happened, and have been extremely supportive of us. Jane's maternal family basically adopted Luke after she got custody of him, and have called frequently to make sure he's okay. We did manage to save some money with everybody we uninvited, and have decided to use it to help Jane's cousin. She lives in a different country, and was previously unable to come to the wedding, so we're paying for her plane ticket. Luke has gotten much better, and is almost completely back to being the sunny child he's always been. The split lip was shallow. It's healing slowly, but didn't require any stitches. We sat him down a few days ago, and explained that my dad and stepmonster wouldn't be around anymore. He really liked my dad, but understands that he and stepmother are attached at the hip. He's clearly scared of her, but we're doing our best to make him feel safe.